If you're anything like, uh, like I am, there's no way I want to return to the past. Let me give you a few reasons as to why I've hel I held, hold this position. Yesterday's show, we talked about the good old days, and they ended it with a, a quotation from a humorous P.J. O'Rourke. He says, when you think of the good old days, think dentistry. Uh, there's so much about the past that you and I would not want to return to. Now, there's some, again, some nostalgic features about the past uh, that we would all be a, would like to be a part of, but for the most part, most of us would like to really live in today. Let me give you some, some statistics about the past. Um, the average life expectancy in America uh, was uh, 47. This was just 100 years ago. It was 47. I would have been dead 13 years ago. Uh, the U.S. Census Bureau projects that 114,000 Americans uh, will be uh, over 100 years old this year, and a number is expected to swell to 241,000 by the year 2020. Only 14% of the homes in the U.S. had a bathtub 100 years ago. Only 8% of the homes had a telephone, and yet uh, today uh, telephones or landlines are becoming obsolete. Uh, you can, again, you can carry a cell phone around with you everywhere you, anywhere you go. You can get on the internet and, with Skype and, be, and talk to people all around the world. A three-minute call from Denver to New York City cost $11 if you could get through. I remember at Christmas time, we'd go down to my uh, we, my grandmother's, uh, my mother's side, and all the cousins and the uh, aunts and uncles would be there. The house would be packed with people and had a few aunts. I had an aunt in Virginia, had an uncle in, in um, uh, New Mexico. And in order to get the long distance uh, operator, I mean, it, it you had to call the operator. She had to go through a whole system in order to get the call. They'd call you back and you get on the phone. You could hardly hear the person. I remember party lines where you would actually share a line with your, with your next door neighbor. If they were on the line, you couldn't make a call. Uh, today, you can, you know, long distance charges, there really aren't any long distance charges anymore with the, if you have a cell phone. Uh, you can, you can, again, you can talk to anybody around the world. So 8% of the homes had a telephone. Nearly every, every person in the United States has a telephone today. Your teenage daughter and son have a telephone today. Well, of course, and that has some annoyance to it as well. I watch young people come into uh, restaurants and, you know, they've got girls especially have their phone and they're always looking at it and they put it down on the table while they're eating dinner and, or the, I saw one with a mother, you know, playing a game at the, at, at, at the uh, when you're waiting for the pizza to come. Uh, so technology, of course, has its, its great benefits. It has its downside like, like anything. Uh, there were o only 8,000 cars in the U.S. and only 144 miles of paved roads 100 years ago. And people say, oh, well, that was, that was the, the, talk about the good old days, you know, cars and all the pollution. Uh, go back and do a study of, of, uh, of horses. Uh, people say, we, went, we need to get back, back to the horse. Um, if, if you wanted to travel downtown, you traveled by horse. Uh, and in and, and summer days, like today in New York City, where the temperature is over 100 degrees, you imagine what the roads would be, would be like in, in New York City today if horses defecated in the streets and then the drying quickly and the, the wheels of the carts uh, going over, uh, going over the, uh, the, the feces of, the, of these horses and then the, the dust going in the air and, and breathing it. It was just as bad in winter as all of that turned into slush. We have no conception of what pollution is really all about. The average wage in the U.S. was 22 cents an hour. The average American worker made between $200 and $400 a year. A competent accountant could expect to earn $2,000 a year, a dentist $2,500, a veterinarian between $1,500 and $4,000, and a mechanical engineer about $5,000 a year. Now, of course, with inflation, these, these, these uh, uh, salaries go up. More than 95% of all births in the U.S. took place at home. Uh, and that's not necessarily a, a, a bad thing. In fact, my youngest son and, and his wife uh, had their, uh, their baby at home. But the access uh, to hospitals today uh, is, is, is unbelievable. I mean, at, at any time of day or night, if you have an illness, you can go to the emergency room. They have these kind of um, docks in a box uh, places all around where you can get immediate health care service if, 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 if you need it. 
The five leading causes of death in the U.S. were pneumonia and influenza, tuberculosis, diarrhea, heart disease, and stroke. Now, heart disease and stroke are still high on the list, but hardly anybody dies of diarrhea or tuberculosis or pneumonia and influenza uh, today. Only 6% of all Americans had graduated from high school 100 years ago. Uh, so what is America's most publicized health risk? Obesity and diabetes, which are in fact related. So here we have the biggest problem in, in, in the United States today is we have too much food. Uh, we, we actually pay farmers not to produce food in order to keep, uh, keep, prices, uh, keep prices elevated. Uh, again, you can go back, you can go back and, and, and look at the past and, and evaluate the past and say that these, those were a better, better time than today, but that's just not the case. The flu epidemic of 1918 and 1919 killed somewhere between 20 and 40 million people worldwide. And they've just, they're destroying millions and millions of doses of the flu vaccine uh, that, that really didn't materialize this past, this past year. Uh, so these are other indicators that the, the past really is a shadow for us. We only want to see the things in the past that, uh, that, that are the, the good things of the past. We have a, we have a Pollyannish way of looking at the past. We, we, God has put us here in the present. He has given us the tools in order to make, make changes in our society. Uh, we, we, we don't have to move to the past in order to make those changes. We can, we can derive from the past those things that worked. We can dismiss the things, dismiss the things from the past that don't work. Our problems are, are, are not in these conditions. Our problem is in our effectiveness and our willingness um, to, uh, to, to live out our salvation with fear and trembling in this world, to, to take the tools that God has given us in order to make a better world for ourselves and for our children and our grandchildren. Uh, we, we, we need to quit uh, looking at the future as something that is dismal and uh, uh, unchangeable, untransformable. Uh, we need to, if nobody 100 or 200 years ago could have ever have envisioned this world as we see it today. And I know we have homosexuality today. We had it in the first century. Paul deals with it, with it in Romans chapter 1, 1 Corinthians 6, and 1 Timothy chapter 1. Um, we have abortion going on today. Uh, but they had a, abortion going on in the first century. They, they, would, they had infanticide going on then. Uh, so the, you, again, put, put the present and put the past in proper perspective. Uh, let's quit belly aching about uh, today and, and belly aching about what the future might hold. All, everything is in place. All, all Christians lack is the initiative and the faith uh, to, to implement all of the gifts that God has given us. So we need to embrace the future and work to, uh, to, to seek to change it in the best way that we can. American Vision is proud to present this year's Worldview Super Conference, July 21st through 24th at North Metro Church, Marietta, Georgia. For more information, visit conference.americanvision.org. That's conference.americanvision.org.